If you're making anything in Fusion and you want some type of text on screen, you're probably gonna be using the Text Plus node unless you're doing something in 3D. So let's go over five different things to help improve the overall aesthetic of your text on screen. So let's jump right in. We'll grab a Text Plus node, drag it in, drag it up so we can see it up here, and we'll just type in something here. And let's change the font. Hopefully you know how to do that. I'll pick a font, make it a little bit bigger, and let's add a background in here as well. Something like that, bring my alpha over. Okay, so we have our text here, and if you've used any other nodes in Fusion, you know about the modifiers, right? These up here. We can add modifiers to any input or control that is in Fusion pretty much. We can also add it into the text and the text actually has a couple of modifiers that are specific to the text plus node. So let's go in and I'll quickly show you the first one and that is going to be color because if we go and we add in, let's add in a color, right? It's going to add the color to the whole piece of text. Whatever we write in here, it's going to be this color. We do have the ability to go over to shading, which has to do with color, and we can add in other elements, right? We can add in other elements like that, like a background or the line around, but we can't do individual letters. So I wanna quickly show you actually how to do individual letters by using these modifiers. So if I right click in here, I can go into character level styling. And what this is going to allow us to do is do each individual character. But if we come over to the modifiers and we look through the settings, we actually don't see any controls in here, right? There aren't any controls. And the thing that we have to do is first make sure that we have this node selected, right? Go back into the modifiers here. And we're gonna go up into the viewer and just highlight the node or the letter in which we want to uh, adjust. Once we do that over here in the control, when we have the modifier on, we can uh, change anything. We can change the font to anything we want, right? But we can also change that color. So this is how we would be able to go in and really change uh, a lot of different aspects because we can any of these controls we can do on a per character basis. So we could come in, change uh, the outline of a letter or change the color or change the font and change the position and all of that. So that's one big thing. And I think that uh, if you're you know, just getting into using Fusion, this is probably something that you wish you could have done just over here and you're like, I can't do this, and you're, or you try to highlight and then you try to change the color, but then you realize that it's not actually changing what's highlighted there. So yeah, I wanted to show you how you can change on a per character level. So let's go over to the next one. I'll come up here to clips because I have a couple of different uh, versions in here and let's go into drop shadow. Let's add a pretty cool drop shadow. So I actually created this um, already. Okay, and we'll view it up here. And so this is pretty much my drop shadow. If I put it to 100%, that's my drop shadow. Now, if you were to just grab your normal text, you could grab a uh, drop shadow, right? And add the drop shadow on. That's great and all, but it's just a copy of it and we were just blurring it, right? We don't have this directional drop shadow like, I'm, like I have here. And so I wanted to quickly just go through this. If you've never uh, you know, um, thought of this idea, it's pretty cool in uh, how it works. So uh, first off, we can grab, or we can make a drop shadow by just doing it this way, by just getting a directional blur, sorry, let me zoom in here. We can grab a directional blur and put that behind the element, right? So if I did it, uh, let's put this um, here and then bring this in, we could do something like that, but that obviously doesn't look that good. So instead of that, what I decided to do is we take this directional blur, right? And we put it into a bitmap but then we just crush it, right? We crush it all the way down so that all of this um, blending that's happening here, we just make it all solid. If there, if there is any type of color data, down here is the color data, when I move my mouse up here, if there's any type of color data, we want it to be a one instead of this uh, 0 0.0 whatever, right? We turn all of it to one. If it's a zero, then it stays a zero. So that's what we're doing here. Anything that is a 0001 gets remapped 
uh, on this side of the corrector. So then it, everything becomes solid. So we could just take that and pipe that right in and then get that as a background, right? And that's a pretty cool drop shadow, but we could take it a step further and have some type of like fade off. So all I did is I took my text and I just blur my text and I'm doing the same sort of thing, but we're cutting it with this. So let me just put this up side by side so you can, this paints a better picture. Um, and so we're taking this blurry bit and we're cutting it, whoops. We're cutting it with um, this. So that's what we're doing here. So I bring this over and we're just cutting it, right? And then from there, we're just going into a, uh, just a solid black. And then we're taking this and this, and we're setting them on top of each other. And then just so I could visually show you guys uh, how it looks, I just put it on a textured background like that. And so that's how we would get a really nice uh, drop shadow that kind of falls off. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys in how that works, but yeah, that's how we do that. So uh, adding in your own custom drop shadows is uh, pretty cool. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is where it gets to be fun. And this is a follower. And so um, just like how we were working with before, we're going to add in our text. And so here is our text. And this is going to be more on the, oops, on the animation side of things. We're going to, uh, like we could do, we could move this, right, all together. But what if we could move in them all, all the letters individually, right? That would be cool. Well, we could do that already, but what if we could get them to do like a follow the leader? And that's where this term follower comes in. So one of them moves and then you have a, a wait time or a delay and then the others will do the same thing. So if you had like a line full of people, the first one moves, then, you know, the one behind moves like a queue, you know what I mean? And they're just following behind. So that's what we're gonna do here quick. So right click and we're gonna go into follower. From here, we'll go over into modifier. In here we have time, timing is the first one and we have delay. So every, if you've done anything in Fusion, you know that all time in Fusion is just frame. So we'll have it one frame and then this delay is gonna be between each character. So in the first one will move and then the second one will move and the third one will move. We have an order. So we can say, okay, do we want it to go from left to right? Who's gonna lead the pack? Um, inside, outside, random, uh, it's completely up to you. But uh, leaving it automatic, it goes left to right if that's the kind of text you're working with. Okay, so now let's uh, get a little bit of an animation in here. And so we'll come over here to shading and we'll go down to position. And that's where we can start to move this uh, shading layer, right? This uh, white. So we'll come down here and we have this offset. And let's just move our playhead into frame one, sure. We'll click on this little button here and that adds in another modifier, the path modifier, which let's not be super concerned with that because us moving these, it's going to modify that modifier. Anyways, so let's just, uh, uh, let's move it down, sure. And then we'll move in in a period of time and we'll go back to zero. And we can see that now they're all offset, right? And that's just because here at frame one, nothing happens. Frame two, the first one moves. And then remember we have a delay for one frame. Now the next one moves, next one moves and you get the idea how that works, right? So if I play this back now, it's very linear. It doesn't look good, but we can jazz that up and make it look a little bit better. So we'll go into the spline and let's bring this up just a little bit. So we had that follower and then we made that offset, right? Which made a path one that has a displace. Um, I'm not really gonna get into like the reasoning on these, but uh, that, remember that path one and it has this displace control, which is the, the movement, right? So uh, I'll just delete that keyframe. We're gonna take this last keyframe here, highlight it, hit F, which adds in easing, and then we can hit T to get our ease controls up, and then we can go like that to move that around. And now if we watch it, they all kind of come up to rest, right? 
So that's how we can do that. Now you don't have to have it linear, you know, just go from down to up. You could have it go left to right, or you could have it zigzag because remember, this is a path, right? So we could just control this path and get it to do whatever we want, but it's going to, all the uh, letters are going to be, uh, have that delay on it. So they're just going to follow each other, however it works. And this progressively, uh, all these uh, um, things I'm talking about here uh, get added together as we go on a little bit more. So the next one that we could add is um, a motion blur, right? So I'll just go into it quick. I'll load it in here and let's close it. And where are my nodes? Why don't I see my nodes? Okay, there we are. Okay. So. For here, we don't see anything, and that's because I have a follower on, and a part of the follower, instead of just doing position, we also did opacity. So they all start as off, and then they start to come on. And so this is where you can start to add in all of these different elements to get something that looks pretty cool. So I have that path, and it's on a bit of a curve, right? So let's see how this looks. So it comes in and it all bounces. So here I have a ton of different things that are all working together here. And I can quickly go through how this all works. But it all bounces. I didn't have to add the bounce. I didn't have to do any of that. But I wanted to, to show you the bounce because as they bounce, one, I have motion blur on them. But as they, you know, they're uh, bouncing back and forth, they even have motion blur there. So... Let's go into uh, setting this all up again. Uh, let's add in our follower again, and one, and then we'll go over to styling and position, and we'll come back to the beginning, and we'll keyframe, and we'll come in a bit, and we will keyframe it. Uh, actually, this is zero, zero, and let's go back to that first keyframe, and let's just have it off screen, or like that. Sure. And so now it comes over like that. Okay, so that's the first bit, right? Um, the other portion that we had is the uh, opacity. So we'll turn that down and then just come in a little bit and have the opacity on. So now it's coming on, right? Um, I'm not really liking that. But we'll leave it like that for a second because we'll go into the spline and we'll pull this up a little bit and we're gonna go into our offset and add our easing in that we just added in, right? And so there we go, that's looking a little bit better. But we don't have that motion blur yet, right? So it's coming on, it's all very sharp. So let's add that motion blur on. So to add motion blur on, we're gonna go back to, let's close this for now. We're gonna go back to our tool, right? To get our settings and we'll go over into settings and then here we have motion blur. We'll click that on and it has a quality of two currently and you can turn this up as much as you want. It goes to 10, but you could write in here whatever you want, right? If you really want it to, I suggest not going that high. Um, I would say just depends on how, how long things are staying on screen, but just not that long uh, because render times become pretty crazy. So there we go. Now we have motion blur in here. If you want to have these controls on, let's say you have a lot of nodes going on and you want to turn off motion blur but not go into every single tool that has motion blur on, you just want to visually turn it off here so your, uh, your performance is sped up a little bit, you can right click right in here and there's a motion blur setting. So you can turn that off. So now I won't see the motion blur, but when I leave the fusion page and go to render because these are these motion blur controls are here it'll render out with motion blur and i don't have to be concerned so this is kind of like the just turn it off in the viewer sort of thing okay so now we have that in there if you did want to know how i did the the curve all we're going to do is come back over to here and we see here is our path you just grab these handles and kind of just do like one of them right and then then we have our you know control like that. The only other thing that you might be asking now is, okay, that looks cool, but I also don't have the bounce. So let me quickly show you the bounce and how that works. So let's go back over here to our modifiers and we have this displace. Now remember the displace, we can see it's animating there. That is for our path. And if I just clear this out, 
that is going to be um, how the, the move is, right? And so what we can do is we can right click in here and add additional modifier on top of a modifier. So if we come in here, we can go to animation curve and I will just come down to source and change that to custom. And then we can pick our points again. So we'll start here at zero. Let's go to like 18, sure. And we'll put a one in here. So it just goes from a zero to one. And now we're, have, we're back at the same spot that we previously were, right? Let's actually turn off that so it goes a little quicker. So that's kind of back to where we initially were. But instead, what we can do is we can come in here into uh, linear. We can go into easing because remember we were adding easing in. So this controls a little bit different. And then we can come into here and we could go back all the way down to bounce. So now we have that bounce, right? It's obviously a little harsh. So what I would do is come back into spline and change this to input and open this up. Now, remember, we have the path and now we're using animation curve and we have that input. That's where we added those keyframes in. So I'll just move this over, highlight this, holding down shift so I don't go upper, oops. Holding down shift and then we can move this in time. And then um, we're getting a bit more. I think what I'll do is also grab this end and bring this in so my curve isn't so much. And that's kind of like where we were, right? So that's how we did that. So that's um, motion blur. Oh yeah, because we had motion blur off, yeah. So that's how we add motion blur on. And then the next one and the final one is going to be uh, using prism blur. I'll quickly load this up. I think that this gives a really cool aesthetic. And when that renders in, Same sort of thing that we were just looking at, but what we can see on the text itself, it has these, uh, the like edge. Now you could go real crazy on this. I like to go light. It does have a point that you, ha that you can grab here and you can move um, how, it's, how it comes on. I have my settings like really low. Like if I turn this back to like where it was, this gets like kind of crazy. But uh, going back to how I had it, it, I just like it to be real subtle and for it to be on all of them. So I move it way off screen and then it's real subtle on all of them. Um, but yeah, that's just something little that I like to add in. I don't know if Prism is a studio only. I'm not 100% on that. Um, if it is, if you guys are playing around with these tools and you're not on studio, let me know in the comments. And if I see something in the comments, I'll pin that post. Um, and let you know if it's studio only or not. I don't remember though, because that was added in the last version, like 17 or something like that. But so those are the five things that I'd like to add onto my text when I'm building stuff in Fusion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you want to know more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a whole website with a ton of different courses going over every aspect. Uh, I also have free titles and transitions and all sorts of stuff like that. So take a look at the website if you are interested in that kind of thing. But uh, with that being said, my name's JR. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, guys. Have a good one.